Hi, we're here with Josh Hartnett, who plays Ethan Chandler in Penny Dreadful. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. What is it about Penny Dreadful that made you want to go into TV? Well, the first, I mean, the first rule for me as far as choosing any project is who I'm going to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. um, and if I find people that are genuinely interesting and interested in their, in, in, the, in the project that they're creating at that time, like John Logan was, he felt like this was his sort of baby and something he'd wanted to do for a long time. He was telling me that he'd wanted to write a novel like this and uh, decided when he was about, I don't know, a chapter in that he wasn't a novelist, that he was more of a dramatist and that he had to do a long format story, but he wanted to do it on, t you know, to do long format, he wanted to do TV. He also wanted to control it. And so John Logan, who's been nominated for God, five Academy Awards, I think, for Best Screenplay, and Sam Mendes producing is just kind of a no-brainer to get involved. And is there anything particular about Ethan that made you want to do it even more? Well, I didn't know much about Ethan when I started, actually. I only knew the kind of bare essentials. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't particularly that I wanted to play this character. It's that these days I'm more interested in playing any character um, with good people involved because it's kind of my job to 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 move between characters mm. fluidly <laughs> seamlessly hopefully yeah. yeah and uh and when i was younger i was really worried about a little bit more worried about how the character would come across but these days i don't mind i actually i i would love to take on characters that are way outside of my my personal understanding yeah. and um in season one, we didn't find out too much about Ethan, and in season yeah. two, we found out a lot more about the werewolf within him. Mm -hmm. How much more do we find out in season three about that? Uh, how much can I say? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ethan is, uh, well, the clever, I think the clever device that John used this year was to separate Ethan and Vanessa across mm -hmm. an ocean. So we had a whole season of them sort of getting to a point where they had to kind of decide whether or not they wanted to be together. And then when they're, when Ethan turns himself in and gets brought back to the United States at the end of season two, we start season three with him in the American West, which is a place that he was trying to escape when he first, when we first started the series. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I think that in this, I mean, as much as you're going to see in this season as far as Ethan's development as a werewolf, it's not, it's not so much that's that's not the that's not the story that we're really telling. The more important thing is that you're seeing kind of where he came from. Finally, you're getting mm -hmm. some backstory, and something that we talked about when we fir when I first signed on was how devastating his backstory has to be in order for all of this to happen. What sends him on this journey that we see him at in the first the first episode of the first season? Why is he there? Why is he running? What's he running from? And um, and John and I had a lot of discussions about it, and we finally got to a pretty devastating place, and I think okay. that that's what you'll see this year. We've got really good actors coming in to be a part of it. Um, Wes Studi's in it. Uh, uh, we've got, uh, he plays sort of a, an Apache sort of father figure mm -hmm. to me. Um, uh, we've got, uh, I mean, I, I, it, I I saw Helen McCoy. I saw a lot of actors last night. I was at the Baftas last night. I saw a lot of actors that I worked with last year, and so now my head's back there, <laughs> and now and this year, and I just had a baby, like I said, so I'm not really thinking very clearly. Uh, but we've 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 got a lot of good people, and um, I just yeah, it's been it, it was a totally different scenario this year because it was in the American West, and um, and so we got to kind of explore a different sort of feel tonally for the show. Um, and for the character as well, mm -hmm. kind of get him out of the frying pan and into, into the fire, as they say. <laughs> and episode one, it shows the grand scale of season three starting. Mm. Does it continue down that way, or how do we then go into each individual character? Yeah, well, it does. It, it's it's a very grand season. There's a lot more to it as far as uh, locations go. We've got our story in the American West, of course. We've got. Uh, Vanessa's story back in England, and Frankenstein has a new um, friend, uh, friend yes. coming back, Doc, Dr. Dr. Jekyll, and their 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 scenes are kind of a continuation or maybe a, a development of the sort of stuff that Frankenstein has been going through in the past couple of seasons. So it's a it's a really it's just sort of amped up versions of the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. There's just more of it. I think it's I think the show's deepening and getting richer as time goes on. And you've got to cut your hair? 
Are you, are yeah. you happy about that? Or I am. It's <laughs> just no maintenance. When I when I was when I went in for the first season and I had been growing out my hair, I said I think it's a good idea. You know, the guys hiding behind it or whatever, and it's just a different sort of look. And and I've never seen a werewolf with long hair. And uh, and and John was all for it. And then after two years, I was like, come on, I got. I mean, I was shooting a film in which I had to cut it, and mm. I didn't want to come back and do a wig. So we. <laughs> We had him shorn at the end of season two. Yeah, must be quite freeing. <laughs> it's very freeing. <laughs> and the makeup for when you become a werewolf is very similar to you. Yeah. Like, how do you go through that process, and why did you decide to not go full prosthetics? Well, it wasn't it wasn't my decision to not go full prosthetics, but like all the characters in this in this show, who end up having some sort of prosthesis, a lot of their face is still involved. Mm. So it's. It, we wanted him. We wanted the. We wanted the character of the wolf to still be Ethan. You know that it. The way that Ethan feels about the wolf, I think, is more that it's not some curse that was put upon him, but something that's come from within him. You know, mm. some some darkness within him that sprouted this, this uh, this creature. And so to keep it as close to that as possible, keep Ethan and the wolf as close as possible, but still obviously making a, a delineation between the two is 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 important. Do you know why he become a were became a werewolf? Or yeah. yeah. Yeah? Do we find out? You will. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I'm looking forward to that. Okay. And um, what can viewers expect from the rest of season three as well? Uh, it's, uh, you know, hopefully, I, I think it's a kind of a thrilling conclusion to the last two seasons in that it's sort of a, it, 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 it ties up a lot of loose ends in my, with my character and Vanessa's character. And I, um, and I think that you're kind of going to get a sense that this, uh, that this, that this world is, um, I don't know, it, it just feels, it feels fully realized. I don't know how to explain it cause without saying too much about okay. it because you get, it's, you're, you're going to learn a lot about all these, all of these characters and, mm -hmm. and I think it's, I think it's really, I think it's really well written this season. I'm very proud of it. And is there going to be a season four? I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Well, Depends on if people watch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so yeah. much for your time. Right. And Penny Dreadful is at 10pm on Tuesdays on Now TV.